Chapter 2 The Law of Club and Fang Buck's first day in Alaska is a nightmare, a perfect contradiction of his life in the Santa Clara Valley. As Buck adjusts to this new life of primitive struggle for food and safety, he has several experiences that accelerate his learning of how to survive the harsh environment. First, Buck witnesses the traumatizing death of Curly, the Newfoundland who first arrived with him from Seattle. Her friendly advances to a husky are met with a savage attack, and when she tries to defend herself, other dogs gather in a circle around her and her adversary. After a few moments of fighting, Curly is knocked to the ground, and the gathered circle of huskies devours her. Francois tries to break up the melee, but is too slow for the ravenous hunger of the huskies. Curly is literally ripped to shreds. Buck learns from this that any fight he has in this new environment will not be fair, and that he must sacrifice his moral scruples and stay on constant alert if he is to survive. He also learns to hate his fellow sled dog, Spitz, who appears to be laughing at Curly's demise. Shortly thereafter, Buck learns to be a sled dog. While Buck is instinctively averse to being treated as a beast of burden, his lesson from the man in the red sweater has taught him never to resist the will of a man like Francois, who holds a whip. Spitz and Dave help to teach Buck his new duties. Dave as a wheeler behind Buck, nipping at his heels, and Spitz as a lead dog, pulling the harness to get Buck on course. Francois comments to Perrault that Buck is a quick learner and a hard worker. Perrault, whose business in the north is to carry the mail, is anxious to get on the road and buys three more sled dogs, Billy, Joe, and Solex. Billy and Joe are brother huskies who are respectively excessively friendly and excessively morose. Solex is an old battle-scarred husky with one eye and a mean temper. Spitz, as the lead dog, attacks all three new arrivals, but only manages to dominate Billy. Joe resists his attacks handily, and Solex is forbidding enough to be left alone. Buck receives a vicious reproof from Solex for approaching him on his blind side and learns to leave him alone as well. That night, Buck tries to sleep in Francois and Perrault's tent, but is driven out violently to his dismay. After wandering the camp aimlessly, with no idea how to get comfortable in the Arctic cold, Buck falls into Billy's burrow in the snow and learns to dig a hole to sleep in. Upon waking in the burrow, Buck instinctively fears being trapped underground evidence that his primeval nature is surfacing through his new circumstances. Since Buck never experienced a trap in Santa Clara, there's no way for him to know how to react to one, except his latent wild instincts. When he surfaces from his burrow, Perrault and Francois agree that his ability to adapt to the new environment is more evidence of his intelligence and desirability as a sled dog. Buck takes to pulling a sled quickly, and is surprised at how the work transforms the other dog's personalities. Dave and Solex, habitually morose and withdrawn, seem suddenly animated and enlivened. Buck is placed between them to learn how to obey Francois's commands, and quickly adapts to the work. For the first day, the dog's trail is packed and easy, but in the following days, Perrault must walk ahead of the sled, packing the trail for them, and the work is harder. Buck is ravenously hungry at the end of each grueling day, and his ration of dried salmon barely slakes his hunger. He learns to eat quickly to protect his food from other dogs, and to steal food from Francois and Perrault, allowing a bumbling dog named Dub to take the blame. His body adapts to the new environment as well, allowing him to eat almost anything and turn it into hard, lean muscle. He develops keener hearing, sight, and smell, and even the ability to sense coming weather so he can build his burrow in the most sheltered place. These and other developments mark Buck as fit to survive the Alaskan tundra. Buck howls at the moon like a wolf, and this further transformation indicates that life is so malleable it can be easily reshaped by habit, instinct, and circumstance.